Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Weekly Word. And today we are going to be talking about postcodes. Yes, in the UK we talk about postcodes. In the US we talk about zip codes. And I'm not sure if we have an equivalent um, in Nigeria, but it's the idea of segmentation based on where people live. So if I um, consider the UK context, for instance, and I start a postcode with E, um, it suggests that a person lives in the east of London. If I said NW10, it um, means that the person probably lives in northwest London and so on and so forth. And you might be wondering, so what does this matter? Why do we why do we concern ourselves with postcode? It's because generally the amenities that you have access to, the facilities is linked to your postcode because they would consider crime um, in particular areas linked to postcode and also the facilities that are made available, maybe the number of GP surgeries, the number of good schools could also be linked to a postcode. And it's funny because last year I moved homes and I remembered um, my car insurance sending me a refund check because the postcode I had moved to was considered to be a, a safer postcode. And um, so my car insurance premium was lower and I had apparently overpaid based on where I was living before I was sent a refund. So how nice, how nice, really, really nice. But hey, let's look at this in terms of God's context because at the end of the day this is a prayer platform and we we like to share things that um relate to our relationship with god and our prayer life and this week pastor agatha in her email was sharing about how we need to situate ourselves also in the right postcode when we talk about ourselves as christians and in layman terms what does this mean it means that we have to understand that our postcode is the presence of God. Hallelujah. That is just amazing. Just, just thinking about that just blows my mind. You know, because when we understand that our dwelling and our postcode is the presence of God, then we see challenges differently. Our perspective changes. And when things come our way, automatically we look in his word and we see strategies to mitigate those circumstances. Beautiful. There's no better place to, to be. In fact, in Psalm 27 verse 4, I believe the psalmist said, he says that one thing have I prayed, one thing have I desired, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when we talk about house, we're not talking about a physical building like a church, but we're talking about the presence of God, the place of God's abode. And, and, and why would the psalmist want that? Because in verse five, it says, for in time of trouble, you will hide me in your pavilion. It says, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide me. He will set me up upon a rock. Amen. Psalm 91 goes on to say that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, when we dwell in God's presence, it says that there is fullness of joy. And scripture after scripture just tell us about the advantages and the benefits of situating ourselves in the right postcode of God's presence. And I'm sure you're wondering, yeah, doing, that's all good. But how do I get into the place of God's presence? And I was reflecting on this in my own life, generally. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have earphones by my bed because, you know, my husband is lying beside me and I don't want to wake him up. I plug in the earphones and I switch on music. I have playlists that I have put together that just take me to that place of God's prayer, of, of God's presence. And I enjoy that. Another way is just being with his children. When I gather with children of God, it doesn't matter what is preached. It doesn't matter what they are doing there. The fact that we are all Christians gathering together just gives me that sense of the tangibility of God's presence. And of course, that is according to his word, where he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Again, another way is when I just wake up, 
and I just begin to find myself just speaking in the language of the spirit. And I begin to enjoy the presence of God, but filled with joy and purpose and direction for the day. And so I want you to reflect back mm -hmm. on the times when you have felt God's presence near and close and ask yourself, what did I do? What was I doing? And what made me feel this presence? And capture this and make this your go-to decision for the rest of the year. And just talking about the rest of the year, in prayer boot camp for all nations, one of the things that we do is we like to end the year strong and in God and usher in the new year with power. And I would like to invite you to our series of prayers that we do 30 minutes every day. We start on the 3rd of December and it's called Spirobics. Now, Spirobics is a time where we all just connect on a Zoom link and we speak in tongues for 30 minutes. We cut off our understanding and we connect directly in the spirit and just speak in the language of the spirit for 30 minutes. And this will start on the 3rd of December. So please keep a lookout. Um, if you already have our Zoom link to join any of the prayer meetings, then it will be the same Zoom link. Otherwise, you can scroll to the end of this message and you will see a link for you, the Zoom link instructions to join. I, I, I pray that as you start this new week, that God's presence will tangibly be your dwelling place and that you would enjoy the benefits of a God puts good. Have a blessed week.